Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on. Looking like the trap of dawn. Giving them all. Like a million bucks, but things in this cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be? But Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 Y'all listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. This one today I want to share with you uh, is for all of us. Uh, and here it is. There is a solution to all of your problems and situations. If you don't know what your next move is, that's a good one. I don't, I don't care what it is. If, if, if the relationship you're in is all wrong and you don't know how to get out of it, it doesn't matter. There is a solution to all your problems and situations. That solution to all your problems, that way to make all your dreams come true, the, the, the way around a lot of this and the, to the, the, the weakness that you feel at times. Is prayer. Prayer, a connection with your creator. Could that be the thing that's missing in your life? I'm just asking. Because whenever I get a little bit off track, all I got to do is think just a moment, Steve. Have you been, have you been praying, man? Have you been connecting with your creator? I know you're busy, man. I know you're busy. And I know at the end of the day, you done, you done. And sometimes crawling in the bed is all you can manage to do. I've said this. It happened to me last night. Again, I did all of this. But when I look and when I see things not moving or I don't feel like things are going in the right direction or I have a sense of being stagnant, all I got to do is retrace it because I'm working. There's no doubt about that I'm working, but am I staying connected? Am I using that weapon that's available to all of us? Am I praying? And the answer is usually no. And so I know, okay, okay, man, I'm I'm, I'm getting off track here because see, let me tell you something, man. The reason, the, the reason I constantly talk to God is because life constantly changes. People who said they was going to do something for you one day have changed their mind the next. Somebody you thought was going to show up that day, called in late, had an accident, and couldn't make it. That changes the parameters of everything. The meeting you had set up that had to be canceled because somebody was ill, that changes the parameters, the time frame of everything, because it's all connected. So if I don't stay in constant prayer, 
and stay connected to the creator when these things happen. I've not put in my bid. I've not talked to him about how to handle it. Or I'm just not aware of it and what to do next. And the next thing you know, it becomes a little stagnant. That has happened to me. I got to get back. Because prayer is the solution to all of my problems and situations. I have found that to be the case. Now, the only reason I'm telling it to you is because I know if you anything like me slash human being, then there are times that you feel anxious. There's moments of desperation. You have moments of uncertainty. There are times when you feel like you've lost your way or you or your purpose is a little blurred. You're not sure anymore. Or you don't know what your next move is or the relationship you in or the relationships you dabbling in. They just all wrong for you. Man, there is a solution to all your problems and situations and it's prayer. If you're suffering from any of the things I just listed or any other thing you could think of, just check your prayer. What has your prayer been lately about it? And this is for everybody. I often find when I get that disconnection, man, my my prayer and slipped off. I start feeling a little bit less, so I got to jump back on it. I'm just offering you a solution to it, man, and 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 I'm giving you a solution that works one thousand percent for show. See, I ain't guessing at this one. I'm telling you what has happened in my life, how I did it. And it'll do for you. God is filled with mercy and grace. He knows we all messed up. He knows all of us have done some jacked up things that don't nobody know about. He know all about our past, man. He know all of that. But he is so full of grace and mercy. So full of 55th chances. But you know the thing about your life, though? And the thing I had to come to terms with? And the reason I don't let my my I, the reason I don't let my past bury me, the reason I don't let my past define me, is because my past, I found out, were just the ingredients needed for me to make this cake I'm eating now. My past is just my ingredients. See, you you don't get rid of your past. The, it, they, ain't, they ain't gone nowhere. They are the ingredients. But when you put them with something else, they look better. They taste better. It is better. All of our past are just the ingredients that have become the cake we eating now. Now, if you don't like the way your cake tastes, then you got to start putting some other ingredients in there. Just because you started off and your cake was messed up don't mean you can't straighten out the flavor of your cake. You got to put some different ingredients in there. So let's say your cake is trifling tasted. It's bitter. Your cake is bitter. Well, you got to dilute the bitterness. You got to put some more goodness in there. So you got to put some goodness ingredients to, to take away the taste of the bitterness. So you got to put some different ingredients in there. You got to start living your life a little more kindly, a little more thoughtful, a little more sharing, a little more caring. And then after a while, man, those new ingredients combined with that bitter, it starts overshadowing the bitter taste because the bitter taste is further behind you now. See, something that happened to you 12, 15, 30, 25, 16 years ago ain't got to be the flavor that's in your mouth now unless you let it be. It's the ingredients, man. If you sick of the way your cake tastes, and change your ingredients. Put something else in your cake mix so you can get a better taste. If you don't like the way your life tastes, pray. I've been hearing my mama say it for years. Boy, prayer changes things. Don't my mama, you say it to me all the time. I say it to my TV audiences when they come see me on the talk show. Before I walk off stage, I tell them these words my mother said. I said, my mother used to always tell me this, and it's bailed me out, and it might do the same thing for you. I say, whenever I get in trouble, I hear her words. She says, son, don't forget to pray. Don't be ashamed to pray. And don't be too proud to pray. Because prayer, prayer changes things. And you better believe something it 100% show do. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Another great day, another honor, another blessing, another opportunity, another shot. Man, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's all good to me. Thank God for another day. Man, you got a chance to get it right. Listen to me. You have not fallen in a hole so deep that God can't get you out. Trust me and believe. I, the reason I know this for a fact, because I've been in several, not several. Let me rephrase that. I've been in a bunch of deep, dark, cavernous holes. I've been in, I've been in some situations where publicly I've been written off. I mean, they just said, that's it for him. Ain't no coming back. I can name a few. I ain't going to do it. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. You know, when they canceled little big shots in the TV show, they thought I was gone then. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm. When they was dogging me on the internet with all them lies, they thought I was gone then. Yep. Miss Universe, they sure thought I was gone then. He'll never recover from this. I could, I could, I, that's, those are just the ones of, that you know about. I done made some that y'all don't know nothing about. I've been in some holes so deep y'all don't know nothing about. God then got me out of every last one of them. I'm a survival. <laughs> I'm, I'm a well-tuned PhD master degree holder in suffering. I have mastered the art of suffering because I have a friend in Jesus, period. Ain't nothing you can do about that. I don't care what you say about me, man. I'm Steve Harvey. Lord have mercy. Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica, Junior, and the legend that is Nephew Tommy. <laughs> I'm back, been traveling, uh, fresh, though, safe. God is good. Junior, uh, what's yeah. on your mind today? Yeah, uh, let, me, let me ask this. Uh, did you know you was going to be great? How do you work at being great? How Hell did you no. get? Well, no. <laughs> all these holes you've been in. Did you know you was going to be great at all these holes? Holes that holes. you were in that you, you better put some L's on them. You better put some L's on them. I said there wasn't no L's. It, I didn't hear well, the L. I didn't hear the L, so I was. <laughs> but you thought he was asking you that, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just he—he he wasn't clear. Yes, that too. No, I didn't. I—I I didn't always know it. I wanted it, but I had many doubtful days. I, many times, man, I—I I didn't know what was next. I had—I had so many times. It just didn't seem sure. But that's what faith is, man. I just kept the faith. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. So when I couldn't see no greatness, when I didn't see no way I could be great, I could see him, though. Ooh. I could see him. And and even when I couldn't see him, sometimes he just carried me until I got myself together. But he was always by my side. Because he has a plan for my life, just like he got a plan for you. And God's plan for you is for your life to prosper if you stay close to him. The only reason your life might not be prospering is because you are not close to him like you should be. Mm. Mm. That's all it is. Because he designed us to prosper. He didn't design us to be, you know, life filled with hardships and no, 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 no mountaintops. He got mountaintops Ooh. for you. All right, you got the word this morning. What are you going to do about it? (laughs) Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew (laughs) right after this. Run this prank back. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. (laughs) It is time now to run that prank back with the nephew. Nephew, what do you have today? I mean, let's just go and call it what it is. I love your wife (laughs) more than you do. I know how much you love her, and I know you don't love her more than I love her. So let's talk about it. I love your wife more than you. Cat dog, if you would. <laughs> I don't you. Hello. Hey, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to reach Trey. This Trey, who is this? Hey Trey, how you doing, man? This is Milton. I work as your wife, Teresa. Milton. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you, you probably heard of me before. I've been. I've uh, been at the job probably about five years now. So has she ever mentioned me? No. No, I ain't heard no Milton. What's going on? Is everything cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything is good. Everything is good. Hey, listen, um, I wanted to uh, have a conversation with you, man. Uh, I, I, I don't really know how to spring this on you or whatever, but um, like I say, I've been working at, at the spot for five years and been on to research probably like around three. And um, I, I guess what I really want to say is that I, I, didn't, I didn't gain some feelings for Teresa. 
And you know, oh, oh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, man, hold on, hold on. You calling me and you're telling me right now you have feelings for my wife, who you work with, and you right. name her Teresa, because that is my wife. You have feelings for my wife. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, it, it took me a while to, to come forward and say this, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm man enough now that I, I feel like me and you need to talk about it. Bro, have you lost your mind? No, no, I haven't. I have haven't, you lost I, your I, mind? Today, no, listen, I'm just letting you know, today is the day that I decided I'm not carrying this weight on my shoulders no more. I'm getting it off of me, all right? And at the end of the day, I love your wife more than you do. What? I, what I love your wife more than you do. Bro, so you, how long you been loving my wife? You tell me how long you been loving my wife. How long, how long you feel that you have been in love with my wife? Uh, I mean, I'm looking at, I know, I know, I know at least two, and how long, does on, my wife three years. Know this? Does my wife even know this? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she's aware of it to a certain extent. To a certain extent? What, what, how, how certain of the extent are we talking? I mean, you know, when we go to lunch together, she, you know, I mean, I'm sure she knows. Y'all be, y'all be going to lunch together? How long y'all been going to lunch together, bro? We've been going to lunch together at least at least two and a half years. I mean, we go to lunch together almost every day. I mean, we might miss a day if she go with the girls and I go with the fellas. So be it. But for the most part, me and her, me and her, pretty much at lunch together. Yeah, I need a. I, I swear, I, bro, stay the, stay the hell away from my wife, bro. I need you to back the. Nah, ain't no more lunches. Nah. Ain't no more. No, 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 bro. Because you 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 didn't talk enough. You didn't talk enough. Ain't no more in love. Ain't no more safe. You need to stay the back. Period. Stay the back, man. I don't want to hear none of that. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Because as soon as you come on, we're going to talk. Hey, bro, listen, listen. I know all about you, Trey. Everything about you. All right? I already know how you treat her. Bro, I'm hot. I'm feeling like a strong sensation right now because I really want to reach through the phone and just break your neck right now. That's what I really want to do. I do. That's what I really want to do. And why is my wife talking about business outside of our household? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Hey. All I'm saying is when we go to lunch, she let me know how she's feeling. She let me know what she's going through. Hey, she let me know all of it. Stop, stop with that lunch, bro. I don't want to hear another damn thing about lunch, bro. Ain't no more lunches from here on out, bro. You I, calling I, me, talking I, about you in love with my wife. You been taking... You know, what the f***? Who the f*** is a Milton? I'm Milton. Where you at, bro? Where you at? I'm Milton. You, to, I'm Milton. you, you there now? Hey, they do. hey, hey man, hey, man, listen. Calm, calm down with all that energy you got going on. Like, you finna do something. You ain't, don't tell me to you calm ain't, down. You're not finna do nothing. What? You found nothing to what? what? You're, not, you're not finna do nothing. Tell me where you're you at right now, bro. I'm getting my keys right now. Tell me where you at, bro. Right now, bro. Right now, bro. You, you, so so how, about, how about when you got laid off and you was off for six months and she was carrying all, all, the, all the weight and paying all the bills? You ain't jump ass in. Yeah, I'm... Mm. All right, bet. So, since, you know, since you know everything, I bet you know I got a too. So uh, all you need to know is, all you need to know is, bro, you're done, bro. You're done, bro. Okay. You're done, bro. Okay. It's it, bro. Okay. That's it, you know bro. what? Why we my, my my the why we that the folks talking about that he with my f***ing wife, saying that he in love and shit, talking about lunch and shit. What the f***? Hell up. While we at it, you can thank me for the for the for the suit that you got for Christmas. You can thank me for that. I picked it okay. out and I paid for it. Okay. A uh, uh, oh. word. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. Cool. Well, let me go in the closet right now. Right now. All right. You talking about the great suit, the three piece? That's what you talking about? This great bull right here with this bull. Keep the anyway. I ain't like this. Well, now, now you don't like the suit. You don't want the suit three times. Now you don't like it. Well, you ain't told me at lunch when you don't want the suit, dude. I swear to God, bro. I swear to God. I need to talk to my wife, man. I need to talk to my wife. I need to talk to my wife because I... Hey, man, listen. You know what? I just couldn't hold this back no more. Me living behind in the shadows. and But I'm over here... Kicking money out to Teresa when she needed. While you was laid off, I'm helping her out. I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing too much on my. Bro, you been... So you was giving her money? You kicking her money when I was laid off? You kicking her money? Dude, somebody had to step up, man. And me and Teresa's tight, so you know, I just tried to step in and help her out. So you giving my wife money? Is what you saying? To me? Do you want me to make you feel better about the whole thing? You want me to make you feel better? I... You ain't need to make me feel better about s***, man. I, real feel, talk, I'm, I'm good. Feel, all I need I'm to do is talk to my wife. That's okay, all, I, I, all I got to do is talk to my wife, bro. Okay. That's, that's fine. But 
can I say something that'll make you feel better? What? I'm going to say this to you, Trey. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your wife, Teresa, got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Hey, this is Tommy, man. This is nephew Tom. Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your wife. On the Steve Harvey Show. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. You got me open the safe getting this <laughs> some, bro. Like... <laughs> bruh. Bruh, don't do that, bruh. You got to stop that, Tommy. Come on now. Come on. You got to stop. My heart is racing. I'm sweating. Oh, come on now. But hey, I got to ask you this. You got to tell me what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest radio show in the land. It's the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Got to be. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got to praise it up really? in here. I'll be back in another hour. You ain't got to give me no praise. I already know it's stupid. Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO, our Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey, back in the building. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Steve, you're trending after your speech at InvestFest Invest Fest about haters over the weekend. I'm sure you'll have a again, lot to say about that. Yeah, trending. you're trending again. again. Here we go oh. again. What did I say? Okay, you know what the hell you, you said. You, you, was got, there. you know what you said. I said yeah. a lot of stuff. I don't remember what I said. Okay, well, we'll we, we got it for you. on that comic. I done watched watch it 10 times. Statements y'all be making. We got it I done watched it 10 times, folks. Don't worry, we got it. Because I couldn't you. believe you was up there. And I Why, did, you it? Why did we please. let him go by himself? Why? I knew it. That's your <laughs> last <laughs> in, in best festival. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got that coming up. Uh, Tom Cruise Associates and a few Olympians say he stinks really badly, really bad. And what? Tom Cruise? Oh, no, Tom. I know. Oh, that's how they do. On them airplanes and stuff. That's where they, that's where they ass running. work. <laughs> doing all his own stunts. Yeah, you yeah. doing your stunts, you be straight. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Nipsey Hussle's wax figure was revealed this weekend in Atlanta. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour, but right now it is time to ask the CLO, our chief love officer, Steve Harvey. This is from Rayford in Oklahoma City. Rayford. Rayford. Rayford says, I'm 37 and my girlfriend is 57. My big brother came to stay with me for a week and she was all in his face and it bothered me. When he left, he admitted that she was flirting with him and she said he's the older version of me. She has a younger sister. Should I flirt with her sister to let her see how it feels? Hmm. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Because this sounds like a bunch of mess right here. <laughs> yes. come up, yeah, that's what she was doing. She got a younger sister. Yeah, just go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, why you with her? <laughs> why she with you? She wants the older version of you, and that's all it is. What? What? They got 20 years between them. you 37, she 57. How long do you think this going to last? Anyway? <laughs> <laughs> but he likes her, that. though. He likes her. Oh, and she probably got herself together and everything. But you know, mm. oh, okay, okay. All right. All right. Mm. Uh, so, you don't, you think he should flirt with the sister? Okay. No, I mean, I, what they in a mess. They in some mess. How he think that's the solution? <laughs> mess begets mess. That's going to let her yep. see how I feel. That's, gonna change. that's not going to change what she said to your brother. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. Uh, moving on to Fatima in Huntington Beach. Uh, Fatima writes, my husband's best friend is in town with his wife, and I can't stand her. I refuse to go hang out with them, and my husband told them why. How can he be so messy and start drama? Was it best to be honest, or should he have lied? Well, uh, whoa, 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 uh -huh. oh, now y'all want to lie. Oh, oh. What is convenient? Oh, oh now y'all want to lie. I done if told y'all. have to. Lying is very very <laughs> critical to the maintaining of relationships. The moment you tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, relationships start to fall apart. Now, hmm. all he had to do was say, hey, my wife's sick. She got COVID. Right. She COVID? COVID. <laughs> she just came Everybody moving? would have been cool with that. But oh, no. No, nah, man. She can't stand your damn wife. Wow. That's, That's cold. cold. <laughs> yeah. He told that. 
the yeah. truth. <laughs> How did that help anybody in this situation? Can't help nobody. The lie would have worked. <laughs> <laughs> I done told y'all about this truth, man. <laughs> Yeah, that, CLO, that truth, you're right on this. So yeah, overrated. yeah. He's yeah. he upset his wife too. She's upset with him. What did right. he say? She don't want to hang with your wife. She can't uh, stand. Because she can't stand her. <laughs> can't stand her. She <laughs> can't stand her. What did you say? She could have went out with those people. <laughs> she can't stand Sheila, dog. She just. <laughs> And he said it in front of Sheila. <laughs> I think it's cause how she looked on me personally, cause she, you know. Oh, yeah, man. he. She don't even know what all he said though. Mm. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. He has no idea. She has no idea. All right, we're gonna move on to Latoya in Phoenix. Latoya says we have three children under age six, and I'm the caregiver, disciplinarian, and cook. My husband goes to our room as soon as he gets home. I'm withholding sex because I'm upset and tired. He doesn't seem to care. Is he over me and the kids? Anybody it sound like all them things. Yeah. Yeah, he sound like it. But these are his kids. Yeah, he wore out though. He done made the kids. Now he gotta go gotta go uh 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 provide for them and support them. He just wore himself out. He probably he, he I really think he mad at himself. He don't like them though. <laughs> he don't like But his he kids. doesn't do anything. <laughs> He go in his room, <laughs> shut his door. I don't want to hear this noise. I've been at work all day, which and is so like extremely kids. wrong on his part yes. because the wife has been with them all day. Yeah. Tired. And it's and they need an, an active daddy in their life. Yeah. It's yeah. called parents. So he wrong on so many levels. Yeah. But the fact is he over with me because you done withheld the sex and he don't care. He don't and care. you know why he don't want no more sex? Because he don't want no more damn kids. Yeah. That's Hello. Right. <laughs> he don't want no more He's babies. cool with the decision. We ain't having no more sex. Well, that means we ain't having no more kids. Cool. <laughs> he solved that problem. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last one, Steve. Last one. This is from Mike in Nashville. Mike says, my girlfriend and my ex-wife are so cool that I see pictures of them on Facebook and my girl hasn't even mentioned that they were together. My girl has met my ex-wife's new man and I have not. Are they way too close? Am I crazy for feeling weird about it? Ah, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Who met their new man? Yeah, they hang out. His wife that met his ex's new man. Uh-huh. Huh. Everybody in the circle but him. He he the one don't ain't it. Yeah, sound me like some swinging going on, pimp. And you ain't. What it sound like? How did you get that? What it sound like? I don't know. I ain't saying nothing. But it sound like some swinging going on. And you ain't in the club because everybody you... cool except you. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you I... had the swinging conversation? And what did you say when this conversation came up? I ain't swinging with no damn body. Okay, cool. All right, well, I'm Okay, now, in all seriousness, that is a weird dynamic. I've never yeah. heard that before. Mm-hmm. Your wife, your girlfriend is cool with your ex uh-huh. wife. With your ex wife. And then they be And her it new man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One big That don't make family. no damn sense. <laughs> and everybody in the group but you. <laughs> well, that only tells me one thing. The combinator, the common denominator in this group of who don't like the one person is you. Is you. <laughs> the ex-wife don't like you, your girlfriend don't like you, and the damn new husband don't like you. Yeah. But that's what they're talking about when they get together, you know it. Wow. So, so he, huh? What'd you say? What what can he do to be a part of the group? <laughs> he can't hang, he can't go. No, he can't be down. What's yeah, happening? They don't like it. <laughs> they don't like it. Uh-uh, they don't like him. All right. No, thank you, CLO. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, so Steve Harvey, <laughs> Sunday at Invest Fest, as you interviewed Stephen A. Smith, you were talking about haters. I know you remember this. Okay, what you said now is trending because everyone assumes you were referring to Cat Williams. So we're going to listen to it first before you say anything and just take it from there. Okay? Okay. 
ain't got sh** doing for himself. Now you to stop your climb up on the wall so you can come down here and talk to his little punk ass. Don't do that, man. I, 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 I stay away from it. Now do I want to? Yes. Because I'm a human being and I'm good. I used to be a fighter and I still got hands. They slow, but if you get up on me real slow, I can still knock your monkey ass out. I just don't have that quickness I have, but I still know how to turn my hip and shift that weight and I knock your short ass out. I shoot your perm straight out your head. I don't even Uh huh. We should not you have let you go down by yourself. Nowhere by yourself, you man. Go by yourself, no more. Mm-hmm. You always get yourself in something. Now this, now you know this finna do something. You already know that. You know <laughs> but, that. You know this finna to do something. All right. So, uh, please explain, <sighs> sir. What do you have to say for yourself? Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it. Bro. How you get off on that tangent? Where'd that come That's from? Start. You me and Stephen A was trying see y'all ain't play what was said before that. Okay. What was said this before? But how you sound out mot- how you start out motivational and then all of a sudden <laughs> I'm gonna whoop yo. I just it just turned. It just you well, know. I said, hard Did you hear me say in that? But I'm human though. Yes. You, yes. You okay, did. we heard that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I said, but Loudly, I'm human. Clearly. Mm-hmm. And I should have okay. just stopped right there. But then the human in me took over the rest of the speech. Right. Okay. We need the so robot just, in you. I just want to so. apologize to the people at Invest Fest. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, anybody it, else? It won't happen. Yeah, to the people at Invest Fest. Uh-huh. I said anybody else? You want to apologize well, to anybody who, else? Who else would I apologize to? Uh, I'm just asking. There's <laughs> a lot there of short ass people perms. got perms. Y'all can fill in the blank, yeah, you know. The- oh, boy. I wasn't really, I you know, Pray for me, you know, my strength. Yeah, you know? yeah, because you're going to have to do better, dog. You're going to have to do better. I'm Teddy Swims, you know. Uh, Who would have? You lose control. I lose <laughs> control. <laughs> when y'all don't go with me. Yes. Junior and Tommy, next time. You should have I, I, came have down with and walked with me through Invest Fair. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, just, you know, just a joke, you know. Yeah. And you're human. I, I get it. You are human. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. As long as you're ready, man. I ain't lying to you. That's the first time I heard it. How did it sound to you? How did it sound to you? Now that you didn't hear it, you you it, you it, you 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 heard it again. Yeah. Well, that sounds crazy when you hear it back. <laughs> but I said it at the time. It was... It was when I, at the time when I was saying you, it though, it was greatness, huh? You thought no, it was I was great. feeling it. <laughs> I was it. I get it. And it was, it was like it was like you know it was like it was almost like getting something off, you know, <laughs> at the moment. But looking back in hindsight, because uh-huh. <laughs> let me tell you something, I had asked Stephen A. Smith just before that, uh-huh. have you ever said anything that you've regretted? Oh, mm. that's how it started. Uh-huh. Well, what did he say? Oh, so and that led up trending. to your next statement? It led yeah, up to you. He said, yeah. And then he started talking about this dude that he had said something about. And he didn't want to mention his name. But he's not trending. I'm just pointing that Mm-mm. out, too. No. Nah. <laughs> we ain't heard nothing Stephen A. say. Uh-uh. Then you immediately say something. <laughs> you we ain't heard agree. nothing Stephen A. say. Well, but then, see, <laughs> if I asked you the question, have you ever said anything... <laughs> You regret, I think, it's my job as a journalist is to give you an example. Journalist? Oh, you're a journalist. You're a journalist. I love it. <laughs> you better oh, interview up in a here. Good journalist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I try to I try to when I'm in front of people, I want to be relatable. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the but then you know, journey. part of this is the audience it's fault, because they were cheering me on. If you listen, mm-hmm. they were cheering me on. Yeah, okay, that's they were. What, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. wrong for they part. So I, I think Invest Fest <laughs> owes me an apology. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> You're a yeah. comedian when you hear that laughter. <laughs> okay. I mean, just, you know, when they go, ooh, you know, I just be going, okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> okay, almost uh, stage. Uh, yeah, yeah, almost stage. I'm going to kill it. Uh, have a comedian. Uh, let me ask did you. Did you drop the when mic you after said, you said Did that? you think you went too far, Uncle, when you said knock the perm? I, did you know you went too far then? Did you know? I, you know, listening to it, <laughs> yeah, I should have used another term like bangs or something like that. <laughs> oh, that's Dread. better. Bangs, <laughs> 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 
acronym. <laughs> or I should have just said, you know, activator. Activator <laughs> would have been a better choice. Or I, I like the fact that you apologized and said you were human. That's all you yeah. can What yeah, a caller. Well, you know, my question is, you know, when you, if what you do for a living, what we do every day, you know, you have to think before you speak. So when you came out and you said, and you heard the crowd and you said, yeah, you just yeah. kept going. Yeah. That- yeah. 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 I had thought. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you think, you know, it don't all, you don't always think well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. You're human. It's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't always think well. So I just hope so this it, don't it turn it into a mess. That's all. Well, all I don't right. see how it's going to turn into a mess, you know. I just hope it don't. Because all, <laughs> all I right, do, I up. just apologize. <laughs> At 20 minutes after, a new survey shows that perceptions of VP Harris are significantly higher than Donald Trump's. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys. So according to Yahoo News, a recent survey of close to 2,000 adults in the U.S. shows that perceptions of Vice President Kamala Harris are significantly higher than those of Donald Trump. Respondents were asked to describe Kamala Harris and Donald Trump by using 16 different adjectives. And this is what happened. Okay, for VP Harris, the most frequently used words were focus, optimistic, honest, Mm -hmm. and normal. Now, for Trump, they used dishonest, chaotic, extreme, tough, racist, weird, and divisive. Okay, this was a racially diverse group of adult men and women who were surveyed. Pretty accurate. Even with that, he got 70 million votes last time. Yeah. The alarming thing about it is he is still their candidate. Right, no matter what. Because of the hypocrisy of this country. Uh, I was looking at Grant Cardone's uh, page, and he put up the people who were fed up with the Democrats, who used to be Democrats, who are now Republicans. Republicans. And it was RFK. Yeah. It was Donald Trump, Elon Musk, Mm -hmm. and it was him. And, you know, I've known I've, I've known Grant for a while. I did his 10X conference. You know, I've known him for a while. I've always mm-hmm. liked the guy. Mm-hmm. But you put up three people that I would want to be nothing like. I don't care nothing about RFK. I don't give a damn about Trump. And I sure wouldn't want to be Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. So you put yourself and he put the four of them together. and But you're all very, very wealthy people. And, and what you all don't want to do with the Democratic Party, I got their tax situation ain't the best for rich people. I got that. But you all also know that you all have the loopholes to jump through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your former President Trump has not paid any taxes. That's why he won't show them to you. I'm telling you, man, y'all just it's just a hypocritical, hypocritical society. And for Donald Trump, he's in some more trouble. And they, the Republicans are not even mentioning it. And the Democrats won't there. do enough mentioning it. So, I mean, I don't know where we are. We just got to get to the polls and vote. Yeah. Period. That's it. Period. That's what we have to do. That's Register it. if you're not registered and get to the polls and vote. Democrats don't know how to scrap, man. That's what they probably They don't, can't man. take it for granted. Scrap, baby. They don't. Mm-hmm. See, d- Democrats be trying to fight fair. Republicans ain't Go doing none high. of that. Yeah. No, we gonna put a convicted, a convicted. We gonna put a felony. Oh, felony. we putting a <laughs> sexual battery. We putting all that in the White House <laughs> because he Republican. Yeah, right. Man, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. All right, we gotta go vote, like Steve said. And coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, uh, it's Tommy time yet again. Another <laughs> question <laughs> or something. <laughs> From Tommy, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so, Tommy, we're giving you this time to do what? Listen, I got an issue. I've I've been on, you know, I've been working from Zooms. I'm doing interviews Mm -hmm. and different things from Zoom, Zoom Mm -hmm. meetings and all kind of stuff. Listen, it's getting out of hand, y'all. It really is. What? This, I just, I'm tired of things that you hear when black people... Think they hit mute, but didn't. 
on a Zoom video call. I, it's just, it's out of control. When you're just sitting there and all of a sudden you just hear, take your butt back in that room and put the clothes on I told you to put on. <laughs> hey, hey, come on, man. And we on the Zoom. We on the Zoom, dog. <laughs> we on the Zoom. Come on, man. You got to do better than that. <laughs> Let that dog out so he can pee. If you pee on my carpet one more time, I'm telling you, one more time, y'all going to lose this damn dog to something. I'm telling you. <laughs> These are just things you hear when black mm-hmm. people think they didn't hit mute on the video mm-hmm. zone. I'm just telling you. These are just things you hear. Uh-huh. Come look at this white girl I've been trying to tell you about. She's she the one at the top <laughs> top left corner of him. This is the one I've been telling you about right there. Oh, baby, she, she thinks oh, she, think she all that brown here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These are just things you hear. When black you folks say, you, you "Oh yeah, I, I got yeah. one for you." Like okay. I'm pretty sure I heard this on the Zoom, and I knew who did it. This was, it was just a job like that. I can't stand Barbara ass. I can't stand her. I don't know why she's talking. <laughs> wow! And you thought I you mute and said that one? Woo. Yeah. Go they ahead, big it. dog. Cut the chicken off for it, bird. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken. <laughs> Things you hear when black people think. They didn't hit mute on the video Zoom. That's all it is. That's all it is. Listen, bring me my coffee. I can't stand up. I'm butt naked over here. I'm butt naked. I can't stand up. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Good one, Tommy. I know she knows she could have made that bed. I don't even know how she chose her room. She could have just she could have just made that bed up though. She, we see this bed, this bed ragged as hell. <laughs> she ain't got to be on that you hear when black people have not hit mute on a video Zoom call. Big dog. Close that door now. I'm talking to these white folks in here. <laughs> Thought your mute was on. Close that damn door. I got these white people on this show. <laughs> <sighs> Things you hear when black people don't hit mute mm-hmm. on a video call. Mm-hmm. Ooh, all right now. All right. What? All right, wait till I get off here. You're going to get it in a minute. All right, all right. Oh, so, my we bad. can hear my you. Bad. Yeah, things you hear when black people don't hit mute on a video call. Go on your boy. Tell you right now, that boy need to be in school. He too big to be at home at 1030. Why is he still here? <laughs> True. Y'all silly. Why? Things you, hear, things you hear when black people don't hit mute on a video call. Big dog. Five dollars for what? <laughs> I need five dollars. <laughs> Thank Daddy, you here when black people don't hit mute on a video call. Hey, Amazon at the door. Don't look, please don't let them take my package back. Don't let them take my package back. <laughs> well, black people see it by the Amazon. Oh, yeah. yeah. All people. <laughs> I'll take long. Awesome. <laughs> Black th- things black people say on the Zoom. They, when they think they hit mute, mm. I can't stand this damn job. I can't. I swear to God, I can't. I can't work here no more. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I bet you that said a lot. <laughs> that said a whole lot. Things yeah. you hear when black people don't hit mute on a video call. Uncle Steve, shut that damn dog up. <laughs> They're trying to pay for all this stuff in here and you got that damn dog in that pocket. <laughs> These are things you hear when black people don't hit mute on a video call. <laughs> on a video call. Ooh, her nasty ass is back at work again. Look at her. God, uh, <laughs> Why she nasty, <laughs> She had that same shirt on last week on the same car. She had that same shirt on. <laughs> watch this. Thank you hear when black people don't hit mute on a video call. I'm so tired of these damn white folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Coming up next, Harold, Harold, it is the nephew and mute. the prank Harold, phone call for today, mute. right after no, this. No. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, about four minutes after, um, it's today's strawberry letter, and the subject is, I'm sticking beside him. Okay, I'm sticking beside him. We'll find out what that's all about in just a few, because right now it is time for the nephew and today's prank phone call. Nephew, what is all right. today? All right, before I, before I give it to you, I want to know, what's your favorite ministry? Your favorite ministry at the church? Let's start with, kid, with Junior. Junior, what's your favorite ministry at the church? 
Call it Usher Boy. I love Usher, Usher Boy. Usher Boy. Call Carla, Carla, favorite ministry at the church? Uh, I like the youth ministry. I like watching the youth young ministry. Kids. Love it, uh-huh. love it, love it. Miss uh-huh. Shirley, favorite? I, I like the music ministry, the choirs. I like that. Music. There you go. I love the music. Big dog, favorite ministry at the church? Senior Citizens Choir. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> They'll never know it's day Sunday. Half of them got rolled. <laughs> All right. Well, this prank right here is a different kind of ministry. This right here is the praise dancers. The <laughs> praise <laughs> Uh-huh. Dancers. <laughs> Cat dog, if you would. Hello? This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How you doing? I'm looking for uh, Sister Tanya. This is Sister Tanya. Sister Tanya, this is Brother Fuller from the church. How are you? Oh, I'm well, Brother Fuller. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, uh, we wanted to give you a call about the uh, about the praise dancing that's at the church. First of all, I wanted to really show you how much uh, uh, you're doing a great job over there with the praise dancers, and you you definitely do a great job on uh, every third Sunday that you guys actually perform. Everybody seems to really like it. Well, thank you, thank you. What can I do for you today? There is a bit of a situation with um, you know it's been brought to our attention. We actually had a small gathering, a little meeting about it, and wanted to. I've been elected to actually give you a call. And it, who is this again? I'm sorry. Who are you again? Uh, Brother Fuller. Uh huh. And, and 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 who had a meeting? Uh, some of the brothers at the church and and uh, pastor actually sat in for a moment on it, and uh, I was actually elected to actually just give you a call. It, it, nothing that I don't think we can't get uh, rectified and, and and you know move on smoothly as we normally do. But I, I just think it's we wanted to reach out to you and kind of make you aware of it if it's a, a, if you don't mind. Okay. Um. And what things are those? Well. Uh, sister, sister Tanya, has any of the praise dancers uh, um, before they became praise dancers was, mm-hmm. was 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 any of them strippers? I, I beg your pardon. Was any of the praise dancers that at the church that you have uh, uh, on the praise team right now was any of them strippers in the past? I'm sorry, sir. I don't I don't really know who you are. Um, and I don't really understand this line of questioning. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm Brother Fuller. I don't think we've met. But uh, I, like I said, I've been elected to give you a call. Now, now it, it, it seems like what happened is this past week when you all actually uh, danced, it seemed like a couple of the girls was actually gyrating during the praise routine. Say what? Gyrating. Brother Fuller, I don't know who you are, and I don't know what you saw. None of my girls were gyrating. They were dancing for the Lord. Well, some, some, and I think some, if you look through your Lord's eye, perhaps you would see them better instead of maybe you were looking through the gyrating eye. No, no. Well, see, a couple of these girls, we can point them out. A couple of them have uh, uh, strip girl tendencies, evidently, because some of them have been driving. Strip, 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 strip girl tendencies. You know what? Sir, uh, I think we need to uh, complete this call. Perhaps I need to call Bishop and speak to him myself because, you know, I don't know what you do all day, but I have a real job. And I'm sitting here holding a conversation in my office about gyrating strippers in the church. Are you kidding me? Ma'am, listen. Now, here's a couple other things that, that they're talking about. The, some of the girls' uh, feet are real ashy when you all are performing, and they want to see if maybe you can, you can. I don't know. Maybe I don't know if y'all need the grip or whatever that y'all don't, y'all don't put lotion on. I, we're not sure what that is. Um, as well as the the the, the, uh, the toenail polish. Everybody has three, four, five different designs and everything. Is it any way y'all can be in unison with your toenail polish? But the most important thing is the gyrating doing the dance routine. I don't know what your feet look like. I don't need you calling me, talking to me about my girls, their feet, their nail polish. Perhaps your mind should be on Jesus instead of on them. How about that? Oh, you know, man, I, for no, my no, mind no, no, no. I don't have time. I don't have time. It's, I don't, I don't it's know what your for my mind is. to be on Jesus when somebody's shaking their butt at the church. Now, that, that's the problem. Well, you know what, look, I'm at work. Now, I'm trying to keep a work tone. You're going to make me curse up in here. Now, let me tell you something. Don't call me anymore. I will deal with Pastor. If he has something to say with me, he can say it to me personally. But I'm done with this conversation. Are you going to deal with the gyrating is what we want to know. Maybe, you know what, it, it, it just hit me. Maybe you one of the ones that's doing the gyrating. I, look, let me tell you something. My girls ain't doing no gyrating, and neither am I. Now, I am done with this conversation. Do you understand are you, me? But, but listen. I'm done. Are you done with the done. gyrating? That's done. what we want to stop. So we, can, we can't praise the Lord if the booty is shaking. You know what? Sir, look, I I gotta go to work. I gotta go. Now, I, I, 
again, I don't know what your issue is. It sounds to me like you have an issue with gyrating booties. I have not heard so much gyrating booties in one conversation in my entire life. Now, my mind is set on Jesus. I don't know what your mind is set on. Well, Sister Tanya, before you was a praise dance uh, uh, oh, 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 ministry, over the ministry, did, did you ever use to strip? No, I didn't do no stripping. Now, did your wife do any stripping? Uh, what? Did your mama do any stripping? What did you say? Wait a minute, well, You heard what I said. You heard what How you like when somebody call you and ask you if your mama did some stripping? How you like that? I got All you. I'm, you know what I want to know? When is the next rehearsal? That way I can come and pick out who it is that's doing oh, this no, 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 no. You don't have You don't have any business at my rehearsal. I don't want to see you at my rehearsal. I don't want to, I don't want to see any parts of you in my rehearsal. If I see you near one of my girls, that's why I'm coming after you myself. Do you understand me? We need to find out who doing that job. You don't need so to find out. Thing. You need to stay your butt in your own house. And, and, and I'm glad y'all ain't dancing when the plate is being passed, because ain't no telling how you act with them wands coming through that. You know what? That's it. That's it. You call me disrespecting me? I'm at work. I can't even handle this no more. You know what? Don't call me no more. Don't look at my girls no more. Matter of fact, come near the church and see what I got for you. I want to know is you going to stop the job rating. When no, is you going to stop do it for thing. moving? That's, I'm not going to do it. Want. Thing. Who you think you talking to like that? You're supposed to be a, a, a minister. I'm to you. And I'm done listening to you. Now I'm getting ready to go. Well, I got one more thing to say to you before you leave. Now you ain't got a thing to say to me. I said I was done. And I said I got one more thing to say as you listen. You know what, man? Get off my phone. And I'm going to say it anyway. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your entire praise ministry congregation, all your girls, got me to prank phone call you. Oh, I'm a shitty. <laughs> For real. Oh, oh. Oh, they got me cursing on the radio. Oh, hey, oh, oh. Oh, I think I'm going to have it. <laughs> hey, I got one thing to ask you, Tanya. What's what that? is the baddest radio show in the land? Nobody else but the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> 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 and there you have it. That's some praise dancers up in here. Those are the praise dancers. I love thank you, the thank you, <laughs> thank too. you. I like them, oh, Shirley. Just oh, you know, sometimes. I do. I like it. There's like always them. one that's off. She ahead of everybody. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, they're not perfect. <laughs> yeah, oh, we know that. Totally sure. polish. <laughs> you looking at her toes? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's all the people be... that couldn't be gymnasts and cheerleaders. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> Y'all are praise him in the dance. Okay. Yes, it is. <laughs> Buffalo, New York, you already know we ain't got to talk about it. It's the House Party Comedy Jam, August 31st. That's this Saturday, this Saturday, Saturday night, baby, Labor Day weekend. We wearing white. Yes, we are. Shea Performing Arts Center. Tickets on sale right now. Got a few of them left. Laying in the cut is Augusta. Georgia, Augusta, Georgia. That is Friday, September the 6th at the Miller Theater. The nephew is coming to town. I ain't been to Augusta since, oh my God, 15 plus years when I was opening up for Uncle Steve way back in the day. Laying in the cut tickets on sale right now. And then we have the Women's Empowerment House Party Comedy Jam. That's the big DM. That's Columbia, South Carolina. And it is open to the public. Tickets are on sale right now. That's September the 28th. That is the Women's Empowerment House Party Comedy Jam. That's Nephew Tommy and Friends. Tickets are on sale right now. And then also Chicago. That's Chicago, Woo-hoo. Illinois. That's the sweetest day, baby. That's the sweetest day comedy jam at the Win Trust Arena. Sweetest day comedy right. jam. Tickets on sale right now. All right, Nephew. Thank you. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter Subject. I'm sticking beside him. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM by clicking Submit Strawberry Letter. And we could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, I'm sticking beside him. 
Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm married to a man that loves to talk big and bad, but when it comes down to handling his business, he lets me handle the tough stuff. It's gotten worse over the years, and he still won't shut his mouth or stop harassing people on our app for the neighborhood. It started when my sons were in school, and his way of handling bullies was to go up to the school and talk all big and bad to the principal, but that never solved the problem. I had to snatch one of the bullies up one day and threaten him with the frying pan when he came in our yard talking about he was going to kick my sons behind. My husband looked at it all through the window, through the screen door. His boss bullies him and he comes home telling me all that he's going to do and say, but he just takes it and stills not getting paid what he's worth. It couldn't be me. I just want him to relax and settle into the soft life as an older man that does not have to assert himself in every way. There's an app that serves our neighborhood within a five-mile radius. Different neighbors post when dogs are on the loose or if someone is illegally parked. My husband goes on the app and blasts people if their trash can is overflowing, their front porch light is out, or if their mailbox is a little crooked. He calls them out by name and house number. He has gotten so bad that the HOA president reached out to me to see if my husband is going through anything. I had to curse the man out because I am ride or die for my husband. I know my husband is a lot, but I'm sticking beside him. How do I get him to stop with all of that bravado and just chill out? Is it because he's short or what? Oh, <laughs> okay. Boy. Well, oh, I'm a, you know, okay. I, I know Steve is going to deal with his vertical challenge and his Napoleon complex and all that in his very special Shirley, Steve I way. I just noticed that the, <laughs> the two short people on the show is not on the Zoom <laughs> right now. I just noticed. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that you put that at the end of your letter for a reason. Okay. So your man calls himself standing up for the victims of bullies and all that when he's the main one that's bullying everyone, but he hides behind you, his wife, when he does it, or he's on his computer yelling at people in your neighborhood, or I'm sure he has road rage, which which takes place in the car behind the wheel by yourself. Uh, What is that? I mean, anyone who's ever been bullied knows that one of the ways bullies are stopped is to come face to face with their victims and get knocked out or something. You know, bullies don't like confrontation. They like to sound and act big and bad, like you say. But deep down, they're scared of any kind of physical contact or confrontation. They don't want to fight for real. Uh, They're cowards. And I think it is admirable that... um, you know, you stick by your bully husband, but it's time to start ignoring his ranch. You've got to stop that. It, you, you, you know, letting him go on and on. Ignore him. Let him know he needs to leave these people alone before they do really whoop his behind. And I hope they do it when you won't be there to help him. Maybe that'll shut him up. Steve? Well, the reason for this letter is because he has gotten his ass whooped before. <laughs> <laughs> more than once and so now he goes up to the school where he know ain't nobody gonna do nothing he goes on the app where they know ain't nobody gonna do nothing he talks trash from the screen door where he know can't nobody do nothing he's all talk with no action and the reason he is cause that talking and got him whooped before. And he done took one. And this is how people act when they get into that. He talked big and bad, but when come down to handling his business, he let me handle his stuff, tough stuff. And it got worse. He won't shut his mouth. He harassed some people on our app for the neighborhood. It started when your sons was in school and his way of handling bullies, he went up to the school, talked all big and bad to the principal. But he never saw the problem. You had to threaten the boy with a frying pan when he came to your yard talking about whooping your son. Your husband standing there looking through the screen, though, because he didn't want no part of that bully. That boy looked like he could win. Because, you know, there are people who get choked out on the playground by kids. So you got to be <laughs> careful that you ain't one of them, you know. His boss bullies him. He comes on telling me what he going to do and say, but he just take it. He's not getting paid what he's worth. 
I just want him to relax and settle into the soft life as an older man that does not have to assert himself in every way. Now, let's just get to the end of the letter. You want to (laughs) know, is all this because he's short or what? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, I've noticed that uh, the the two people on this show that thought this letter was about them had disappeared for a while but they <laughs> bravely come back in because obviously they found out that the man was five six and they all taller than him so they came back in on the letter that has a lot to do with it but when we come back I will share with you mm-hmm. it's just really nothing else to say it's just you're, you're not going to change him What's going to happen, though, is see that ass whooping he did get happened Mm -hmm. earlier in his life. Yeah. He ain't had one recently. Mm -hmm. But to avoid it, when I come back, I'm going to tell you what he's just like, because you all have seen this before. All right, Steve, we'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour today. Strawberry letter subject. I'm sticking beside him. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is I'm sticking beside him. Well, she got a man to talk trash and don't never back it up. He talked trash down at his job. You know, his boss bullies him. He come home talking about what he going to say or do. He go back. He don't never say nothing to his boss. He's not getting paid what he's worth. Uh, when your sons got bullied up at school, he went up there and talked to the principal, told him what he was going to do, didn't do nothing. The boy still bullied his boy. She had to settle it with a frying pan in the backyard when the boy came, talking about whipping your sons behind in his backyard. He's standing in the screen, though. I say that because he's had his ass whooped in his younger years. And to avoid it, he knows now. And now here's the big problem. You all got this app that discusses the neighborhoods in the five mile radius and he on there on a tear talking about people's mailboxes is crooked, trash is overflowing, lights is out on the porch, you know, and they calling them out by name and house number. Mm, mm, mm. And the homeowners association got and called you and asked you, is something wrong with your husband? Is he going through something? <laughs> you cussed him out because you ride or die with your man. Well, that's cool, but your man going to get you in trouble too. <laughs> mm. Now, you want your man to settle down into a more relaxed old life and everything, but here's what your husband is. Y'all ever seen online that dog behind this gate and he just mm. barking at this big dog? <laughs> <laughs> and mm-hmm. then the gate slides open and the big dog is standing there and all of a sudden the little dog just try not to even make eye contact with him, just look off. <laughs> then the date gate closed and he go back to run. Rah, 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 rah. And then the gate slide open and then he shut his ass up again, the big dog looking at him. Uh-huh. There's an old story about a dog that used to run off the porch and this man used to walk his big Doberman by the house every day. And the little dog would run up and jump all up against the fence and the gate and rah, 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 rah. and the Doberman Pinscher never did nothing to the dog. And so then every day this happened. The Doberman come by with the man, mm-hmm. the little dog run out to the fence, put his paws up on it and just go down the whole lot. Rah, 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 rah. The Doberman just ignored him. One day he ran down that off that porch and jumped up on that fence and that, doberman, and that Doberman was walking by. Mm-hmm. And the gate was ajar. Ajar. Ooh. And when he leaned against the gate, the gate fell open. <gasps> now he oh. right in front of the Doberman. The Doberman uh-huh. picked him up, snatched him, jerked his ass around. And I mean, gave that little dog the blues and then mm-hmm. threw his ass back up in the grass. That little dog ran his ass back up on the porch. And when the Doberman walked by, the, the little dog just sat there and said, who in the hell Left that gate open. <laughs> the gate open. <laughs> and see, that's what's happening to this man right here. Somebody going to open the gate on mm-hmm. him. Somebody right. going to leave the gate open. Mm-hmm. And that's all that need to happen. And then this dude, it'll be through. Now, you say, I know my husband is a lot, but I'm sticking beside him. 
How do I get him to stop with all that bravado and just chill out? Is it because he's short or what? Now, <laughs> we all know we've heard of the Napoleon complex. Some people have it. I don't mm-hmm. really have that. I've never been short. Never. Nobody <laughs> never thought I was going to be short the whole time I was growing up. I've always just been a, a tall. I've been av- more than average. You know, the average man's height, they say, mm-hmm. is 5'9". Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. The average male oh. height is 5'9". Really? Height? Really? Yeah, that's what I... Well, look it up. Y'all Google okay. it. What's the average male height? in the United States. Okay. And just tell me what it is. Somebody Google it right quick. I'm waiting. Doom, 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 <laughs> doom, 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 doom. I can tell you it ain't six two, inches. though. It's five Excuse feet me, nine what is it? Inches. Five feet nine, what you said. Five foot nine, nine is the average height of mm-hmm. the American male man. I've never been average. So let me refer to the two men on this show uh-uh, as head. Uh-uh. More experience uh-uh. being 5'9". More time at 5'9", than me, because I, I blew right through 5'9". I didn't, I didn't stay there not <laughs> even for a summer. I don't even remember never, I don't even remember being in school. Nobody said, who's Steve, you 5'9"? I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I never had no teacher tell me I was 5'9". Yeah, I don't know. 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 I think that if I think I was just sleep one night, I was five, seven, five, eight, and then I woke up now, five, ten, five, eleven, then I, <laughs> I hit six. And, just tall, you know. huh? Fellas on the show, could it be because he's short or what? First of all, we're not short. Let's get that straight. Wait, who? We yeah. average. You just said it was average, so we average. Yeah, five feet nine. Own it, Tommy. He I said like it. it. Own it. Yeah, Thank he you. said it. So we average. But at the end of the day, I'm I'm whooping anybody ass with with, with a problem. With, if, with, whether I'm the dude in the screen door, what 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 where I got to be? What 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 you want me to say? I'm, whatever it is, I'm whooping their ass. Now where we at? Right there. But I'm, I'm I'm talking about that whoever in the screen door, the dog, ten talking, the Doberman, that's whatever. Ten talk. <laughs> All Junior, day, Steve. All Junior, what's your problem? Um, you know, Uncle, I'm just, I'm just here now. I'm with Tommy now. Now, if you, if you test me at five nine, you can get a five nine ass whooping if you want one. <laughs> okay, all right, oh, five nine. Really say it with your chest. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, we always talk about is. whooping so somebody. So they answered your question is it because he's short or what? And yes, the answer is yes because the two short people on the show both of them said they're with me. So. Leave your comments <laughs> on today's Strawberry Letter on Instagram and Facebook at Steve Harvey FM and check us out <laughs> on the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app. Coming up next, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Well, first, show I just got to remind everybody we're, we're getting close. September 7th yeah. is coming. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. The 5K mm-hmm. run and fun walk for Kier's Hope is happening at the Battery in Atlanta, and we are so close. We got, we got this Saturday, then the following Saturday, we there, and Uncle going to be there, too. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, Junior. I'm not going to be there. <laughs> yeah, I will. Cause See there? I'm unable. See, I'm unable you could have lied then. You could have lied for me, huh? You didn't even. Well, see, right there. See, why lie? Tell people I'm coming, then I'm not going to come. Y'all need to make up y'all mind. Then do y'all want the truth or do you want the lies? What y'all want? Okay. Uh, we know you ain't just leave me alone. I just lied to you, you right. the whole time. Quit right. wanting the truth all the time. And then when I give it to you, I do. You could have lied. Well, damn. <laughs> It's so foreign, though. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Let's get to some sports. Let's get congratulations, C.D. Lamb of the Dallas Jewish Cowboys. Story. He got his contract, got his money to hold out over four years, $136 million, making him the second highest paid Ooh, wide what? receiver behind Justin Jefferson in the NFL. $38 million nah. signing bonus, $100 million guaranteed. Like Lord, man. <laughs> Kylie. You better come on, Rich. You better come on, C.D. Yes, he's hey, from man. H-Town. Get yeah. your check. Yeah. Got his it's money, man. How many years? Now, 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 four years, huh? $136 million, $38 million signing bonus, and $100 million guaranteed, dog. This this boy here, man, let me tell you something. How much is guaranteed. $100 million in our mind? What that look like, huh? Because you got $100 million. What that look like? He ain't got no, <laughs> uncle ain't got no $100 million. I done counted that. He ain't got no How <laughs> you counting his I money? I know. I, what, what? You don't count your people money? That's my uncle. I mean, man. you count his got- money? He ain't got no hundred. I'm telling you that right now. Wow. Steve, you got a hundred million? Me and Steve would have been walked away from this him. <laughs> and I'm talking about, and I'm well, talking about holding hands. Tommy, you have to look at what the contract is. 
contract is a hundred million guaranteed. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's a hundred and thirty six over four years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That ain't I'm That ain't what? That ain't what? What, what what did you worry about? What what is wrong with this? This is there's nothing about. wrong with it. That's a lot of money. Yeah. But y'all excited about that. Okay. Sure am. Wait a minute. You sure so are. <laughs> you have you not excited about the hundred? You got more Wait, than that? Why, why I'm, are you I'm not happy excited? for him. Look, bruh, I'm 67 years old. I've been doing I've been doing this longer than C D Lamb been alive. Well, what you want me to do? I'm not apologizing about mine no more. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you say? <laughs> what you talking about? The money? You know, you know what? Yeah. I ain't making no more damn apology. Don't damn what CD Lamb got over four years. Cool. I'm happy for him. Congratulations. Hey, man, ever ever since in, in, in Vest Fest, dog, you yeah. got a little attitude, man. I'm just trying yeah, to tell I don't you. Understand in Vest Fest? Yeah, what, what, <laughs> sir, what's <laughs> happening? <laughs> we know I'm All right, more than me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Coming up next, some people need your advice, uh, Steve. Coming up at the top of the hour, a man was misjudged by a lady he wants to date, so he wants he needs your help. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Steve, this one is from Daryl in Montgomery. Daryl says, I'm a garbage man. I met this woman on one of my routes after she hit my garbage truck. There was some damage done to her car, so I sent her a check to get the repairs done so she wouldn't have to file an insurance claim. She was so grateful that she baked cookies and I stopped by her house to get them. I asked her to go out and she declined. She said she's a professor and she didn't think we'd be a good match. I own the company and seven trucks and I grossed $1.8 million last year. Should I tell her or is she even worth my time? Well, no, man, don't tell her. Don't tell her, but tell her. Oh. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Don't you say it. There's probably something on you on Facebook or something about you owning this company and stuff like that. Because for you to write a check for her uh, car, I mean, that was like was pretty nice. dope. Because, you nice. know, uh-huh. you weren't just riding on the back of the truck writing mm-hmm. checks. You know. <laughs> so, no, don't tell her that, but leak it. But get somebody to just say, hey, did you, you heard you met uh, Ernest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Ernest owns, uh, you know, Ar- Ernest owns uh, uh, this car, this waste management company. I would leak it somehow. Because, mm-hmm. you know, what you want to do, but don't, but don't pursue her, m- make her come for you. And then you may, but it may not be for you because she, she's concerned. She may be concerned with the look anyway. I don't care if you okay. make eight million. That's my she question. might be tripping about you just being a garbage man. Then you need to find somebody else. You need okay, to that's in. my question, Steve. Is she wrong? Is she wrong for how she feels? She's a professor. Well, I mean, there's a lot of think. women that 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 do mm-hmm. that. Y'all know, because mm-hmm. because y'all looking at. See, this is what I tried to teach somebody one time about picking a man. Mm-hmm. Stop trying to find a man that compliments you. And find you a man that completes you. See, you want somebody that compliments you with that look. He tall. He look good. He Thank he you. wears suits. He we we look together. Everybody see us as a couple. We think we no. Find you somebody that is what you're not, and you are mm-hmm. what he's not. Y'all mm-hmm. want to compliment co- complete each other, not compliment each other. So she looking at the surface of it. Mm-hmm. I'm a professor. And it wouldn't look right. I'm dating a garbage man. Well. Lady, you're going to be down at that school trying to get that little uh, retirement check and stuff. And this man right here, them built. If I was you, dog, I'd find somebody else. Just because she was honest and said they weren't going to be a good match, she didn't think they Here we go with that old honest mess again. I told y'all. This is the third time this show. to know this. Yeah. Well, how you feel. Well, but see, that's what I tell y'all all all the Mm -hmm. time. Y'all keep looking for a look Mm -hmm. instead of some quality. This man right here got a plan, but you worrying about what your friends gonna say when they find out you dating the garbage man. The man gross one point eight million. You ain't made that down at the damn school, <laughs> nor will you. Oh. It be you oh, be two years to... down at that damn school before you see one point eight. Mm-hmm. He need to quit picking up her trash for a month. Let it get real funky around there. That's what he need to do. <laughs> <laughs> he wrong for that. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you're saying let it leak out, let her find out about you. I think, too, it's part of it where women feel they don't want to settle and they don't want to have to take care uh-huh. of a man. So if I understand she, that. I think it, that's but part of it, too. If a man done wrote a check for your car, so you don't have to call your insurance company. Right. You got to wonder for that's a minute. Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute, fair. man. Mm-hmm. What's up with that? Because ain't nobody, ain't nobody just got no regular job doing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I'm just mm-hmm. telling. Regular, you. Yeah. Right. Right. He ain't yeah. signing the back of the check. That's somebody that signed in the front. Mm-hmm. 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 But see, <laughs> you can't recognize that because you're so busy worrying about your little image as a professor. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd stay your broke ass over there. Okay, all right. <laughs> a broke? Who <laughs> are you tense today, boy? You really are. Just dogging this man because <laughs> really he a god. All right. All right. <laughs> Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Tommy, we forgot to remind you about the Philly Naked Bike Ride. It happened this past Saturday. We always like to tell you about it. What? Hundreds of naked and half-naked riders rode through Philly. You just left Philly. You just left. Man, the city's 15th nothing. annual naked bike ride. I didn't miss 15 of them? 15th annual. Yes, you have. It was a 10-mile ride past all of Philly's famous landmarks like Independence Hall. Yes, Steve. Okay, yes. okay, okay. I can't, I can't go 10 miles now. Naked. Now, that's a what? lot. <laughs> what size is the bikes? Hey, <laughs> these big bikes. These big bikes, baby. These are 10 speed. It's they a gotta, swing. Yeah. So what okay, you don't so want to do is they went past the Liberty Bell. And up tan yourself. And of course, the Rocky Steps. You ran those when you were in Philly. You missed all. You missed all of this. It's an annual event. It, it uh, they have it to promote fuel conservation and positive body image. There you go. Nice. This year's right event there, included. Right there. Right what? there. What? They promoting what? They <laughs> positive body image. Positive body image. What? Why would he be on this bike with his short ass? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm average. Done, I'm average. <laughs> they could have all. They they could have also done. Uh, you could have done rollerblades, skates, skateboards, scooters. Oh, that's didn't, didn't have to be a bike. The point is, they were naked. Oh, man, we missed something. You know what? We right. ought to throw one of these butt naked rides, man. Let's throw one of these. <laughs> More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 I'm minutes after. We'll play that. a round of Would You Rather <laughs> right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather drive an old, loud, raggedy car, or would you rather drive a new Ferrari with... A Make America Great Again, a MAGA sticker, bumper sticker on it. Oh, no. I'm riding with that sticker. We're going to figure out something to put on top of that sticker. We're going to ride. I'm, nah. A new Ferrari with a MAGA oh, yeah, sticker on Ferrari. it. Ferrari. I've had the loud raggedy car already, so I'm going to have to go with the Ferrari. I don't, I don't even have to believe in the sticker. I, the sticker ain't got nothing to do with this. No, We're not no. going back, Junior. No. Uh-uh. Steve? I'm definitely riding in the Ferrari because that MAGA, that's a new jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mega. Change the name okay. of it. That's how I got the car. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you rather be undersexed or underpaid? Which one? Oh, well, that's. I'm already undersexed under or underpaid. Yeah. I ain't going to give we up all my pocket, I'm already Yeah. Oh, I'm, I know. I'm undersexed, so. And it and what's bad is it ain't gonna never get where it was. It ain't gonna. <laughs> <laughs> gone, dog. She days. feels the same way. We're not going back. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going Underpaid. back. <laughs> 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 Steve. Right. Steve. Under sex oh, I'm, or underpaid? I'm definitely gonna be uh well, what is it again? Under sex or or underpaid? Would you rather? Which one? Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not finna be underpaid. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you because you get enough underpaid, you're gonna be under sex anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you rather wear a midriff on stage, you know, with your belly out, or would you pre- rather perform barefoot like uh, Eric Benet? <laughs> what? Barefoot. I'm barefoot. I'm, I'm not wearing my stomach out. That's not gonna happen. No. 
hard now. You know how hard they gonna be laughing. <laughs> well, that's what you want, right? <laughs> no, no, we laugh you with me, not laugh at me. With you, not at you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd have to get some chest pads put on so I could make the t-shirt stand up <laughs> off the, off my stomach. <laughs> What Steve and Tommy and them got on in Junior? They look a mess. <laughs> Their bellies out. I'm Damn. over here barefoot. <laughs> All right. Would you rather work the drive through at Popeyes or would you rather work the drive through at Chick fil A? Oh, definitely Popeyes. <laughs> Popeyes. Get some- Man, get going. This gets my mind. I want to tell somebody it's going to be 20 minutes for dog meat. <laughs> no, I'm working. I'm working Chick Fil A. They, they'll whoop your ass at Popeye. I'm working at Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A, nice. <laughs> My, My pleasure. My pleasure. Courteous. <laughs> no, what about you? They too Steve? busy at Chick Fil A. Their ass be busy the whole time. You don't get a break at Chick Fil A. At least at Popeye, <laughs> it be some times when there ain't no cars in line. <laughs> <laughs> they always in line at Chick Fil A. <laughs> All right, guys. That's today's round of Would You Rather. Popeyes had like 10 minutes. Ain't nobody been through that. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, our last break. Found of out the that day. chicken sandwich wasn't all that. That killed. <laughs> and we'll close it out with Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, guys. Our last break of the day. <laughs> What a day, what a day. <laughs> it's been a crazy day. It's been a fun day. Um, Steve, you wanted to take us out with some closing remarks, of course. Something yeah, you've this prepared. is what I heard mm-hmm. over the weekend. I'm, let, let me tell you something before I go. I'm not angry about this at all. It's rather humorous to me. Mm-hmm. But I wanted, who I spoke of rather respectfully the last, the last time week. I talked about it, mm-hmm. You know, when he claimed that me and Ricky Smiley was being paid by the uh, Harris campaign, $10,000. I don't know where that figure came from. But anyway, I commented back. But I was real respectful for the brother. And But he's upset now. And this is what he's saying. I'm going to just play a, just a short. Television debate with Steve Harvey, D.L. Hughley, Ricky Smiley. Is the Democratic Party the party of African people? Roland Martin can join into. Okay, so that's what he said. But now let me say this, y'all. And to, I, I know, bro, you, you, you're you shooting for fame. I got it. I've been famous a long time. I, I, I know you want that light. I, I can tell because you, cause, cause you keep doing stuff to draw stuff to you. But I'm not going to debate you about anything because there's nothing to debate. I never told you that the Democratic Party was the party for African Americans. I never said that. The reason you want to debate me is because you claim that Kamala Harris and and and, and the Harris uh Waltz Can't team pay. paid me ten thousand dollars. Didn't anybody pay me ten thousand dollars. I don't work for ten thousand dollars. But bruh, we ain't got to debate debate about what? It's it, it listen to me. Why why would I debate you about what? We have a simple task at hand this November. We either go to the polls and get Kamala Harris in office or we sit at home and watch Donald Trump become president. Mm-hmm. Now what's to debate about that? There's no debate you know, man, y'all got to slow down with this wanting these clicks and likes and going viral and 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 talking. See, I got I've had real TV shows. I got real radio show. I got real media platforms. I ain't got to go on Facebook Live, TikTok, IG. No, no, no. I I get I got really high paid platforms. Real media platforms. I got game shows. I got talk shows. I got I got, I got podcasts. I don't even know nothing about. I'm not here to debate anyone. This is a simple choice for us. Now, if you want to try to make it about uh the okay, but let me say this before we get started. And you talking about Omega Sci-Fi? Be very careful. Be very very careful, bro. Slow your roll when you start mentioning the cues. Just 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 slow your roll. Everybody ain't wrapped that right in my frat. I'm just gonna let you know this right now. Some somebody gonna take that the wrong way, dog. Just slow down. Cause we not the ones. 
You you go get somebody else, but please, Lord Jesus, don't say nothing about the cues. I'm I'm here for you on that now, Omar. Omar, just 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 me as your brother for uh, out of love. Leave the cues out there. I know you said it, and then you tried to back out, but let me just clearly let you get all the way away from that. Cause I got some dudes behind me that. Boy, you don't even understand. So let's keep the cues out of it. It's a true statement, though, that three of the top radio shows in this country happen to be men of Omega Psi Phi. Now, we happen to be pushing for Kamala Harris because we care about the conditions of our people. Now, we never said the Democratic Party was for Africans. We all know that there's trouble for us on the horizon all over the place. But we still, we have to vote, bruh. Because if you don't vote for Kamala Harris, it is a vote for Donald Trump. That's the choice here. That's not debatable. He's not the type of person who should be leading this country. It's evident to me. There are Republicans who are for Kamala Harris now. There are so many people who are converted over. I don't know. I don't know why you're mad, man. I don't know what's wrong. I'm sorry, man. Look, bro, if I ever said anything to you to upset you, I didn't mean to upset you. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just over here just doing my damn radio show. But this ain't the smoke you want, though. And please don't go debate D.L. Hughley because he got time for it. I'm just telling you right now, my brother, fella King, he got time for it. You don't want him and you don't want Roland. Just slow down. We need to get on the same page on this one right here. This is not the time for us to be divisive. Look, bro, I'm inviting you in to the fold to let's just do the right thing for what's best for the country and our people. Now, does she have a platform for black people? Nope. Did Obama? Nope. Can you have a, has any white president had a platform for black people? Nope. You can't. Nobody say that. They ain't nobody going to be able to say that, man. Let's get unified here. Let's get on the same page. This is not time for division. I invite you to join the fold so we can get this task done to get Kamala Harris in the office. Because if we don't, Donald Trump will be president. And then, and then what's the debate going to be about? Because we're going to be scampering in this country then. You'll see what I'm talking about. So thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Much love to you. And come on over. Walk towards the light. Walk towards the light. Kamala Harris for president or else. That's the damn debate. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you enjoyed the show today. If you didn't, we'll be here tomorrow. Try it again. Peace. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 